Good morning. Welcome to North Dakota Today. I'm Christy Larson here with Chris Berg. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Why are you laughing? Because well, I've got a <clears throat> friend in studio who wrote a great story about his parents' love story, and I was going to kind of rub him or rib him, I should say, but I thought, you know what, I will keep those You'll thoughts You'll be nice myself. since he wrote exactly. a nice story. <laughs> He's a buddy, but I was like, oh, man, we're going to have some fun with him in the next segment. we got a great book out. Have you ever written a book before, Paul? No. This mm -hmm. is your first one? Ooh. I know. Pretty awesome. So hope you can help him get up there on the ranks in Amazon. Also, if you want smoother-looking skin, call me. <laughs> we'll talk about a chemical peel. Plus, I hope you're hungry today, Chris. I hope you're ready oh. to eat. Oh! We're talking about pies, pies, and meal by more pies. Is your stomach adapting to the one hour change? No, it's you... not. I was so hungry by the end of the valley today this morning. And usually it gets hungry when I get back. So I make breakfast. And this time it was like growling through my last segments because it was, it thought like, why are you not feeding me yet? Right. So then I got back and I ate a whole bunch of food and now I'm ready for, for more pies, food. For desserts. So pie. pie. <clears throat> um, but first, obviously, a lot of people woke up. They saw that snow on the ground. They felt the cold when they walked out to their cars. So... Lisa, I know we're only in for more of that. <laughs> she says you might even sing to Aww. us today. No. You know no. what? You know, talking about pie, did you guys, okay, this is a total tangent here, but did you, ever, exactly. did you ever see the movie Michael? Yes. Pie, Where she sings about pie. pie. Me, oh yes. my. That's why I sang it. Michael. Oh, that's okay. I was going to say, I got that song in my head. Yeah. So. Anyway. I'm glad. Back to weather. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, oh, my hair's my a mess. Gosh. Goodness. Okay. So, <laughs> Your hair's great. <laughs> oh, it's been a long morning. We're looking at temperatures that are uh, below <laughs> the zero degree mark this or this morning that hit the below the zero degree mark up north. We were down to eight below in Hallock. It's hiding the the town name's hiding behind the Grand Forks number there, but uh, looking at uh, some sub zero lows to start off this season. More places got in on that in the Southern Valley. Uh, we got down to five in Fargo. Some of our coldest temperatures of the season in the Southern Valley too. One, our low temperature in Valley City. And we're working our way out of that. Looking at our hourly planner, we're going to see those temperatures climb. It's not going to be very warm though today. We'll still stay below freezing. When you're that cold, you know, even a 20 to 30 degree warm up still isn't going to do much for you here. We're looking at wind out of the southwest into the teens, eventually gusting into the 20s. So here's a look at our current temperatures. 11 right now in Fargo, 5 in Grand Forks, 4 in Bedette, and 14 in Gwinner. Wind chills are still below zero, 15 below in Langdon, and 10 below in Thief River Falls. Fargo, it feels like we're right at zero right now. So if you haven't been outside yet today, think January when you're getting dressed and getting ready to go out because that's what it's going to feel like for a lot of people. We've got some clear skies and sunshine as we just saw a few clouds up to the north and we'll stay on the sunny side here today. So through the rest of the morning those temperatures climbing into the teens to some low 20s and eventually we do get into the um, some of us to 30 degrees by this afternoon up to the north some low 20s there and the wind it's going to help to warm us up but at the same time being stuck out in the wind is going to feel pretty chilly uh, that wind actually keeping those temperatures from dropping too much overnight not quite as low as we started off this morning and I do want to take a quick look at our hour by hour planner for tomorrow because that's our next chance for some snow and uh, we're looking at a quiet morning but as we get into the noon hour we'll start to see those snow showers uh, creeping into our northwestern viewing area and then they'll continue to slide south and bring some snow chances kind of like last Last night, right around drive time, Northern Valley, we're looking at 4 o'clock, Grand Forks getting the snow, and then that continues sweeping southward through the evening. Fortunately, it looks like a pretty fast mover, so it won't be a lot of accumulation here. But it, as we just experienced last night, any little bit of coating on the roads leads to a lot of fender benders. So be careful tomorrow. Your snowfall potential, most places less than an inch. There might be a couple of spots that get a little bit more than that. So wintry weather here in the forecast. We've got a chance for snow tomorrow, more 20s for Thursday. We're trying to warm up a little bit into the weekend for Veterans Day. Another system rolls through and we stay below 40 through the extended planner. What was our low today? Wasn't it like nine? It was well. Because it was it felt zero. That was my yeah. that was my first graphic, Christy. I didn't I missed it because I took, up her lenses I took a sip see. of my <laughs> of my chai tea and oh. my glasses fogged up, so I was laughing at it. Five, we had five. We hit five. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. and I, I do think that's the coldest we've been so far in Fargo. Um, and uh, obviously up north, it was even 
more brutal. Even for more so. To. But well, usually those what? people called in sick and they're just sitting exactly. at home watching, <laughs> watching our show. Getting ready to watch <laughs> some pie coming into the studio. Mm. Yeah, we do have uh, some milder air, hopefully, in the extended planner, but beyond our seven-day planner. But right now, it's it's just cold. I put, actually got out my big puffy coat today. It was the first yeah. time that I pulled it out this season. Is it because first time? I, yeah, I've been wearing like my <laughs> thick fall coat, I call it. Uh, for the last few weeks. I get and, that. <clears throat> yeah, and then I saw the snow on the ground and I was like, oh, it's I remember time. Lisa told me it's going to be cold. <laughs> I'm going to get out the puffy jacket. Except for I don't know where all my mittens and hats are. Uh-oh. <laughs> you got to give them back to people I in this think, building. I think they're in my trunks. I think I utilized them for a, mood, a morning show about putting away your winter stuff, and then I just never brought it back into the house. Puts, you put them away. No, I'll let you do that, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> the weather outside <laughs> is frightful. Let it snow. Let it. How about? Can you do frozen? Uh, let uh, it go. Yeah, let one. it go. <laughs> let it snow. Let it snow. Anyways, um, a couple holiday a events snowman? that we want to tell you about. Fraser Limited. It's holding their 17th annual Festival of Trees. So um, you can go and view. <clears throat> about 150 beautifully decorated trees. We have one in our studio here this morning, um, but those are going to be on display at the Fargo Dome. Now, the event starts on November 10th, which is this week, ends on December 1st. Um, here's a little look at what's been uh, there in previous years. Also, you have a chance to have cookies with the Claus mm. family on November 24th. That's going to be from 1 till 4, and uh, Fraser Limited will be collecting socks at the Festival of Trees. And that is, I hear all the time, the number one needed donation item at socks? homeless shelters is socks. Oh. Um, so if you can, please contribute some socks. You can stop by the Fargo Dome um, and add it to the Art of Humanity empathy tree that they have there. And I know I've been out at the Fargo Dome and I love Christmas. It's, it's probably my favorite holiday of the year. Um, and you just get to find all of these cool, unique, different Christmas trees that they have out there. And people always have different, so like some businesses, they'll sponsor a tree and they'll have different oh, yeah. themes. And then the, what's really great is these trees go into the homes of families who need them. They might not otherwise have a tree. Um, and then you can donate gifts too and stuff. So a lot of them will awesome. add little gifts on the trees and stuff. So it's and been I fun. I do want to give you a big compliment. Yes. For the tremendous job, we can get a shot of it again. <laughs> Christy Larson came in here this morning and decorated this. I was working all night long. <laughs> you were like elf. Hanging each of those ornaments, <laughs> you stringing had syrup all the lights. and candy canes, and you just spent all night here. <laughs> Actually, it, it, what I do love, I do love decorating the tree. And <clears throat> unfortunately, I'm not always home to decorate the tree. So I'm hoping, since I'll be home twice here in November, well, maybe not this weekend. That might be too soon. But maybe I can convince Mama Lisa yeah. to let me help put up the tree on Thanksgiving Break weekend. Break it out. <laughs> and Wes, what do we need to do to play Christmas music? We we need to start. Do we need to like get copyright or record our own album? Is that what we need to do? I we could do some. Yeah. We should just we might as well just get it going. It, it's already below zero in some places. And I saw. Wait, can you do that again? Is that like elevator Christmas music? It's like your your jazzy Christmas. Um, I do start listening to Christmas music like as soon as it turns cold, and <clears throat> I love it. My little sister has said this before. Her favorite song is. Come, they've told me pa-rum-pa-pum-pum. -pa -pum -pum. She's even said at her funeral she wants pa rum -pa pum pum to be, <laughs> to be played at her funeral. I don't know if that's still true or not, but... I mean, it's a great song, but why Why do you have... She just loves that song. She just song. loves that one? And one of our... Um, uh, one of our Sunday school teachers, Renee Grange, when we were younger, had made all of these little drums that we got to decorate and had like felt around them and stuff. So you I can't remember if we decorated around. them or if she did. So when we sang in our church Christmas program, we had our little Pahrumpa Pum Pum oh. things. They were like Tupperware containers. I'm not sure what they were, but they told me. And then we got to Pahrumpa Pum Pum. Your poor dad. What a, a saint. Newborn. What? <laughs> We didn't with get to practice like, our pahrumpa pum pum pumming hey, too Dad, much, especially in the car. <laughs> I think we might still have our Christmas drums sitting somewhere in our basement. My mom might have Mama kept Larson, one. Mama Larson, will you send that to her so we can have it here on set? I, uh, we might have kept one, but it, 
I, I love Christmas songs. You can wear, <gasps> we talked about this yesterday, you can wear your Sleeping Beauty outfit mm -hmm. with your Christmas drum and just... Just start singing away. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because you're like you're looking forward to Thanksgiving dinner, but you're also already ready to start putting up trees and, who and was listening the, to Christmas uh, music. Was it Miss West Fargo that played the ukulele? Yes. So we could bring her in studio. Um, the new Miss Fargo. The new Miss Fargo. Or right. new Miss. Okay. West so anyways, Fargo. let's have her yeah. in studio. She can play her song, <gasps> and, and you we'll can play the drums. Christmas. Yeah. And I'm not. I don't know all the lyrics to most songs out there. But Christmas songs, them. I know almost all the words oh, to all the no. Christmas songs out there. <laughs> I just started an animal for the next six weeks. <laughs> You're welcome, viewers. <laughs> um, I'm a huge fan of Stranger <clears throat> Things. I never thought I would get into it, but we what, did. What we is it anyways? It's, so, without giving stuff away, um, it's about a small town, and then there's this lab, and things happen. Oh, I don't know how to describe it without giving stuff away. It's four, and so like these four young kids. Then oh, you're in my head, and I can't, I can't yeah. repeat. <laughs> There's these four kids, and then they're trying to help solve <clears throat> these weird things that are happening in their town. And a lot of people are. Uh, there are some people out there who haven't even watched it and poo poo it, and it's like just watch it because I was like, oh, I don't like scary Is shows. It? It's not too scary, but it's okay, kind of just... a little bit scary. Has a little bit of a sci-fi aspect to it, but not too much where you feel like, oh, I'm watching, you know, a TV show on that channel or anything like that. But it, it's awesome. And in the very first episode of season two. You can see one of the main characters, his name's Dustin, and this is not spoiling anything for people who haven't seen Stranger Things 2, um, but he's wearing a purple dinosaur hoodie, and it's from the Science Museum of Minnesota. Nice. And, uh, it's hard because our banner's a little <clears throat> bit in the way right there, but so it has the, thank you, the Brontosaurus, and then it says the Science Museum of Minnesota. And then they, after this episode aired, had so many requests from fans from not only here in Minnesota, but all not over. in the Midwest, not just the U.S., but all around the world, asking their marketing department um, to get to work. And today is wow. the day that those hoodies go on sale. They, I think at 9.30 this morning, the museum's going to be... Um, putting some hoodies on sale for people. So I know there will be. <laughs> so any, what's the relevance of the scene? Like, why does he have the walkie-talkie thing? Um, that's what's the wrong? one thing. Between the four friends, they all have the walkie-talkies. It's set back in the 80s, so that's how they communicated with each other. Got so it. he has the headset to his walkie-talkie, which is like he was big baller. One, step, yeah. one step above the rest of them. But <laughs> um, we do have this story up on our Facebook page. If you want to go read more about it, find the website to go to on the Science Museum um, to maybe try and get yourself one of those sweatshirts. That might be a Halloween costume next year right that there. That could be. I like the, the hat yeah, the and mini the, the microphone the and then the Science Museum thing. <laughs> that would be really fun. All right, stick around. When we come back, a brand new author is going to share the inspiration for his new novel right after this.